Say hello to Chimmy, the adorable golden retriever puppy I will be using as my reference today for this golden retriever watercolor pet portrait. Chimmy belongs to one of my coworkers, the fantastic guidance counselor, Miss Van Horn, and Chimmy is going to be the subject of my watercolor pet portrait for this summertime series. This is the third pet portrait I have done using my students and coworkers' pets as inspiration. During distance learning because of COVID-19 shutdowns, I had students post their pet portraits in my Google Classroom, and then I picked two to paint. The first one was Finn, the tabby cat that I did in acrylic. Then I painted Libby, the German Shepherd puppy. You can click those links above if you're interested in those. And finally, the golden retriever, Chimmy. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button so you never miss one of my weekly tutorials. I'm using the materials I used on my German Shepherd video. So I have my round paint brushes and I'll put all of the links to my favorite art materials below. So these are things that I don't use in the classroom but that I use with my personal art. I have my Windsor Newton travel palette. It's my go-to and my favorite, and I believe I'm using Canson paper. If I'm wrong, I'll put the link to all my favorite papers below. So check it out if you're interested in materials that are really great for practicing and creating finished works of art. Today I'm starting with yellow ochre, and a underpainting is how I always start when using any type of paint, whether it's acrylic, oil paint, or watercolor. So with an underpainting, I'm focusing on composition. Composition refers to the arrangement and organization of the elements on your page. So I'm looking at the size and shape relationships, and starting, I'm not doing any detail, but just mapping out like where Chimmy's head is gonna be in the frame, how far down uh, Chimmy's ears will be, and then I'll start going back, finding if value you're new to in painting, areas of light. You might find and it more relaxing to sketch with the pencil first, but I find that if I just imagine my paintbrush as the pencil and use lots of water, I don't commit to details and I can pull any color away with a paper towel. So if you prefer sketching out with a pencil, do what makes you feel comfortable. But in my personal art, especially watercolors because it's so light, I just like to build up layers and I think of my paintbrush as my pencil instead of relying on the pencil marks. But you do you, it's your work of art. As you can see, I'm going back in just with the yellow ochre and trying to create areas of darkness using just the monochromatic color scheme for now and leaving the areas white so that I can very gradually layer colors. If you've watched my videos before, you've heard me say that leaving white with your watercolor is really important. You will see me use the white paint because this is a detailed pet portrait that I would do lots and lots of layers and I don't just do wet on wet, I go back in and add once my paint is dry to create just the nice dynamic fur color and I want it to be somewhat realistic. I mean it's never going to look like a photo if I paint it because that's just not my style. It has a little more expression to it and you know painting is great because you see the expression of who painted it and all the human flaws tied in. I think the underpainting is the most important step and when doing this, you should really slow down and take your time to observe what you are painting. So for this, because it's a pet portrait and Chimmy isn't at my house, I'm using a photograph and I'm trying to slow down, pay attention to shapes, size relationships, and you will make mistakes. I always put things in the wrong place, make things too dark or too light, but this is the step where you really understand and get to know the subject that you are painting. You observe the color scheme, you observe size relationships, you observe values, so areas of dark and light. And if you slow down and get your composition right, then you can have fun layering colors when you know that everything is in the right spot. looking at this photograph, I see that the darkest areas will be the eyes, the nose, and the dark part of the inside of the mouth. So I'm using this um, neutral kind of black color that I've created, and it is a combination of burnt umber, so that's going to be your darkest brown, and the titanium, not titanium, 
ultramarine blue. Um, and that creates a really nice neutral color. Notice when I'm applying it that it's wet on wet so you can see it bleeding out into the other areas. So it might be a little premature, but I did want to map in those details so I could kind of work around it. It was bothering me that Chimmy looked a little bit like an Ewok, and so I did want to commit to a few details that I was certain were there. You'll see me work and rework and layer and layer to get my details right. I'm a big fan of earth colors, especially when doing a pet portrait. So that second darkest value you see me painting right now is yellow ochre mixed with burnt sienna. This is a golden retriever and right now he's pretty yellow and so I want to include some warm areas that I think burnt sienna is perfect to capture. It's also darker than the yellow ochre so I'm using that for the areas that are in between the lightest areas and the darkest areas of the nose. So this is great for the shadow inside the ear, details around the eye etc. This work of art I am putting more detail and layers in. This isn't a loose and flowy watercolor like some of my other tutorials. If you're interested in really easy tutorials check out my links in the description box that will show you the basics if maybe this is overwhelming if you've never painted with watercolor before. For a long time I did not have confidence in my paintings and if it wasn't exactly perfect when I was finished with it I would rip it out of my sketchbook and throw it away and if it wasn't exactly perfect even in the midpoint I might give up on it so looking at this artwork now my dog looks like really weird that left eye is way too dark but I've finally come to a place in my art where it doesn't have to look perfect or finished or resolved at this point so I think a lot of times young artists, myself included when I was learning, um, give up way too easily. And if something looks weird or doesn't look right, instead of problem solving and trying to fix it, it's easier just to give up. So my advice to young painters is always keep everything you make even if you hate it. Sometimes I'll put something that I've painted face down and I don't look at it for months. And then when I come back to it, I'm like, oh, I was way too hard on myself. I think a lot of times artists are perfectionists and sometimes it can be intimidating to put yourself out there like making a video to show everyone my process but I guarantee the more you do it and the more you keep your process not you know not throwing it away but you look at it you can learn and grow from things that you may consider mistakes that actually just give your artwork character. notice I'm using really light washes of color. With watercolor you build slowly to create value. With acrylic paint you could just paint over it and try again but watercolor you have to really be careful with going too dark too fast which is something I do all the time. So for my shadow especially in the lower part of Chimmy I'm still using that um, I keep wanting to say ultramarine. No it is ultramarine. That ultramarine blue mixed with my burnt umber to create that dark value. You'll notice there's no black in the palette. So I am committing now to the darkest, darkest, darkest parts of Chimmy's face, starting with the nose and the eyes. So it really looks like Chimmy um, and starts to give the pet portrait that character that just really screams the particular pet you're painting. That was a lot of P words.
is always a tedious part of the painting because it's commitment. And at this point, I wanna rip my painting in half because I'm like, oh my gosh, the top of my head's too big, my nose is too small, my eyes are too close together. So I'm moving on to the background to distract myself from all the mistakes that I can't stop seeing glaring back at me. So I'm using a super light wash of this alizarin crimson. And the background is not gonna be detailed. Um, like you see, the chimney is sitting in a car. So I'm not gonna worry about all that. I'm going to keep it loose and ambiguous. So what I'm doing now is taking my round brush to soften those dark areas in the eye to create shadows. And also I wanna kinda of move my eyes around a little bit since I feel like I put them a little bit in the wrong place to start. The beauty of watercolor is that even once it's dry, you can reactivate the paint with water. So you can kind of smudge around, dilute, blend colors that have dried. So it is forgiving in that way. But as you can see, once you add dark, it's not like you can really erase it. You can pull the paint with water and a paper towel, but it's always best to have um, intentional layers of paint. So I'm hoping now that I've created these shadows where the eye sockets are, and then I can put my darkest areas in Chimmy's eyes in the right place so it really looks like Chimmy. I am layering burnt sienna another time to warm up those ears, give it that really golden retriever light coat, and also to darken areas that can't be as dark because the yellow ochre just doesn't dry as dark as burnt sienna. Do you see that white area on the left side of my background? That's called a halo. No, not Beyonce's song Halo, but that's the area that you don't push right to the next part. Let me try that again. So if you have a background in the subject, if you leave an area of white or a canvas or paper blank, that's called a halo. So Chimmy is sitting in this space, so he should not be separate from it. I'm going back with some blue just to give my background a little bit more attention and I like the blue with all of my kind of orangey, um, yellow, golden colors with Chimmy's golden retriever coat. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that and you'll notice that I'm going to add a lot of details in the background kind of as I go. Sometimes if I feel like I need a break or just something jumps out at me, going back and forth from subject to background is important. You don't want to just neglect the background and just work on the subject because then you haven't created space to put your subject in. Even if it's as ambiguous as just a color kind of fading in and out, you want to consider the space that your subject is sitting or laying or whatever they're doing in. I'm revisiting my darks, trying to get accurate facial features, and you will see me do this a lot. I'm never satisfied the first time I do something. I always work and rework. Sometimes that's to my advantage, and sometimes that's to my detriment. So round two, putting those darks in. Let's see if I get it right this time. Don't worry about the cross-eyed look I've uh, captured with that left eye up there. I'm sure that I will work that out as I do my layering. I've noticed that Chimmy's right side of his face is a little bit more in shadow than the left side. So I'm using that really kind of grayed out blue burnt umber combination to make it darker, but I still want it to have that glowy golden retriever vibe as well. So if I feel like I put too much, I can always layer some yellow ochre on top of it to make my colors pop. So at this point, my video is 45 minutes long and that's after I've sped up the video speed to twice real time. So that means you have been watching me do it twice the speed I'm actually painting. And so I'm going to speed this step up a little bit because you've seen me do it a lot. What I'm doing is going back and forth between yellow ochre for my light values, burnt sienna for that warm mid-tone, and then I'm either lightly or darkly applying that burnt umber mixed with ultramarine blue for my shadows. 
Next, I'm layering white in my pet portrait. And a lot of watercolor artists never use white. And if you understand that the white in your paint palette isn't pure white, that's a great place to start. So the white of your paper is always, always, always gonna be the lightest possible value. So you can see already using this white, it creates a gray. I love using white to tone down or gray out my color scheme and it's also really great for layering. It is good for getting light values and sharp details. Just keep in mind that it's never going to be pure white so don't use it for that. Use it for blending, layering, and it depends on what type of color scheme you're going for. If you're going for something that's really vibrant or you have a really saturated color scheme, you probably want to stay away from white. And if you're going for something with more layers and more muted colors, white would be a good color option to explore. I do know there's some color purists out there who don't use it, but for me, if it's in the palette and it's fun to mix, I'm doing it. Speaking of vibrant colors, I'm selecting this brighter yellow to bleed into the gray white that I've applied to give the puppy a little bit more of a vibrant color scheme. I'm on the fence as to whether it's too yellow. I do think it pops and brightens things up, but it might not be the most realistic color, but I couldn't help but try it out, especially since I just added that washed out gray. I thought it would absorb and kind of gray it out and again, I can always pull any colors I don't like with my paper towel, as you see me doing a lot. This is exactly the point as a young artist that I would rip this thing in half and declare it dead. But I'm going to let it dry and go back in with my tiny, tiny paintbrush to see if I can rework some of my smaller details. It looks so different when it's dry. And remember with watercolor, you can reactivate the paint. If it gets too muddy or it gets where you just feel like you're out of control, put it away, let it dry come back to it with fresh eyes and a smaller brush if you're working on detail. Taking time away from a piece of art can really help your mindset when you're working for completion, especially when the work of art is headed to someone else's house and it's not just something that you're keeping for yourself. This small brush is really making me feel happier about getting those small details in the facial features and also in the fur of the dog. So I really needed um, a different approach because everything was still kind of loose. And so now I'm just trying to look at each part and going back to the same technique where you're looking for areas of light, looking for areas of dark and paying attention to color scheme. So is this area warmer or is it cooler? And then adjusting, as you can see in my palette, my colors accordingly. So I'm only using, you know, what, four colors and I'm just mixing them to have the nuance of the photograph, which is exactly what you would do if you were painting from life as well. I'm going to speed things up a little bit since I'm repeating and repeating those same steps looking at color and value. You might also notice at this point the texture of each area. So instead of washes of color that are kind of random in shape, I'm trying to also pay attention to fur patches and to give it that hair-like texture. A small brush or a round brush with a really fine point is a great tool to capture the lifelike qualities of a dog's fur coat. I'm using my smallest brush again to go back and add my lightest areas. Not pure white, remember, but the lightest furry areas of the dog's coats. So the top of Chimmy's head, above his left eye, there's lots of white on his um, nozzle, that's not right, muzzle, nose, <laughs> we'll just call it the nose. And I'm not freaking out about things being a little out of whack or a little out of proportion. I could have gridded this off if I wanted it perfect. And it's not a photograph, it is the essence of an animal captured through paint. So I'm not gonna be hard on myself that it's not picture realistic. And I really love this step of adding white. It does 
dry, darker than you see it here. And it's important at this step when you're doing all of the final details to let it dry, walk away. Let it dry, walk away. And sometimes the very end is the part you take the longest on because you're gonna be playing around with those light and dark areas and those sharp little features that make it look really lifelike. Ooh, look how those eyes just bounce to life. I love adding whiskers. That's such a fun last step. And I'm also going to pay attention to the dog collar, which I did kind of change a little bit from the photograph. To finish this pet portrait, I obsessively go back and forth from warm and cool, dark to light, white, um, textured areas, and I just try to tighten things up as best I can. I'm probably a little bit too obsessive. I could probably stop a little sooner or walk away, but this is my process and I enjoy doing it. So the end of this video is just me really paying attention to all those areas of warm and cool and dark and light. going to speed things up one more time as I obsess over all the final details. I'm officially calling this finished and although it might not look exactly like Chimmy, I think this really has just a really happy, adorable golden retriever vibe and I'm removing the tape which is usually my favorite part but I ran out of artist tape and used masking tape so you can see it bled a little bit although I really like that style and I think if you put it in a frame it would look really cool and organic. All right Chimmy, you're a good boy. Thank you so much for sticking around and check out the description box below for links to more watercolor tutorials. Also check out my website, thatartteacher.com for long form blog posts about teaching art and art techniques.